If you just bought a Mac, congratulations. After you get settled in, these are the five settings you'll want to change. Number one is a feature called True Tone. Like the iPhone and iPad, MacBooks and Apple's own desktop displays will automatically adjust the temperature of the display, how orange or blue the hue is, based on the ambient lighting of the room to match. Personally, I don't really like it. I would rather have the colors be as accurate to their originals as possible. But you can easily turn this off in system settings. You go to the display panel in the sidebar, and then you just click here to turn off True Tone. It's that easy. Number two, there are a lot of ways you can customize the trackpad. By default, Apple trackpads have you physically click your finger down on the trackpad to register a click. Now, Apple trackpads do go a level above a lot of PC laptop trackpads, wherein the entire trackpad is a button. You don't have to like click in the bottom left corner. However, if you're used to how it works on PCs, you can enable a simple tap to click instead. In system settings, scroll all the way down, click on trackpad, and then enable tap to click. Here it'll teach you what all the other gestures are, like the four finger swipe to switch between full screen spaces or show mission control, and you can edit these to your liking as well. Next is Control Center. Your Mac has Control Center just like your iPhone and iPad, and it also lives in the upper right corner of the screen, in the menu bar. In System Settings, in the Control Center panel, you can add more features to it for easier access. And you can also get rid of the other stuff that you never use if it's cluttering it up. You can even break out some of the control center features into the menu bar itself. Hold down the command key, then click and drag. You can reorder the items, and you can get rid of the ones you don't want. If you use this computer for your work, then you might want to add a focus mode toggle up there. If you share this computer with multiple people, you might want to add a fast user switching menu bar item. And if it's MacBook, you'll definitely want to add the battery percentage. Next, let's talk about AirDrop. This is a massively underrated feature that lets you instantly beam files from your Mac to your iPhone, to your iPad, to another Mac, even to a Vision Pro. From the Finder, which is the Mac's file browser, you can add a shortcut to make it easier to AirDrop files. In the menu bar, you'll click View, Customize Toolbar. You can click and drag the AirDrop button onto the toolbar and click Done. Now you can just select a file and you have easy access to airdrop it to another device. Finally, let's talk about the dock. The dock is one of the most core user interface elements of the Mac and in system settings, desktop and dock, you'll find loads of ways you can customize it to your heart's content. To start, you can change the size, whether you want the icons to be much smaller, but you can still turn on magnification so you can see the icons when you mouse over them. You can change the position on the screen. Personally, I like it on the bottom, but there's a very vocal group of people who like keeping it on the left or the right side. If you're on a MacBook with a small screen, you might want to turn on automatically hide and show the dock. This gives you back a little bit of screen space, but you can still find the dock when you mouse over to the side of the screen that it's on. I also highly recommend you edit which apps are shown in the dock. To remove them, you just drag them up and let go. That way you don't have to see the Apple TV icon or the FaceTime icon on your screen all the time. To be clear, you're not deleting it. You can still get to it at any time using a four finger pinch gesture to open Launchpad or using Spotlight by hitting Command Space and typing in the name. If you want to add an app to the dock, you can just click and drag it down into the position you want. I like to keep my dock a little more minimal. The only app icons I keep in there are the ones that are running pretty much 24 seven because I know that I can instantly hit command space and type in a name or access it through Launchpad. So those are some of the basic settings you might want to check out when you first set up your Mac. Linked in the video description, I have a bunch of how to's, a bunch of pro tips to get you more familiar with your computer. Remember to like and subscribe for more. I'm Deacon Jones with Cult of Mac.